Manufacturers use a variety of names to describe their go faster variants. RS, Plus, Trophy, but Bentley is a little more literal. This is the Continental GT Speed. As the name suggests, the Speed is a faster version of Bentley's luxury coupe, with a raft of changes aimed at making it sharper to drive. But here's the thing, this Continental GT weighs 2.3 tonnes and is meant to be a comfy Grand Tourer. Is there any point making it sharper to drive? Let's take a closer look. The Bentley Continental GT Speed starts at $551,600, but spend too long with the options list and you'll get to the $690,932 of this test car. And that's before on-road costs. Stamp duty alone is more than 50 grand, so budget around $800,000 or so drive away. Fuel consumption is acclaimed 14.6 litres per 100k combined, but from 2023, Bentley will throw in the first five years servicing for free. Other cars you might have on your shopping list are the Aston Martin DBS Superleggera, Porsche 911 Turbo S, or even the Rolls Royce Wraith. All right, let's do a quick walk around to point out what makes the speed different to the standard car. Cosmetically, we've got dark tinted radiator grills, more sculpted side skirts, speed badging, and unique 22 inch wheels. But it's what's hidden behind these wheels that makes the speed difference. Up front, we've got 420 millimeter brake discs with 10 piston calipers. But if that's still not enough, 440 millimeter carbon ceramic discs are now an option for extra stopping power. Air suspension, adaptive dampers, and active anti-roll bars feature at both ends, and the all-wheel drive system has now been recalibrated to send more power to the rear. Here at the rear, we now have rear wheel steering and an electronically controlled limited slip diff, which supposedly make the car feel much more agile, both of which are a first for Bentley. Here under the bonnet, we have a six liter twin turbo W12. So some engines have their cylinders in line, others are in a V, whereas the Bentley has two Vs put together for a W. Now the main advantage of this is that it keeps the engine quite short, and because the Vs are quite narrow like that, the engine still isn't too wide. It produces 485 kilowatts and 900 newton meters, which makes for some fairly ridiculous performance numbers. Zero to 100 Ks is claimed to take just 3.6 seconds, and top speed is a massive 335 kilometers an hour. When cruising, the engine can shut down half its cylinders to save fuel, but don't expect this thing to be frugal in any way, shape, or form. That claimed fuel consumption can easily increase into the 20s, and the gearbox is an eight-speed dual clutch that is programmed to shift twice as quickly as in the standard Continental GT. I'm going to get my biggest interior gripe out of the way first. The previous generation Continental GT had this beautiful wing dash that mimicked the look of the Bentley badge. It was a lovely design touch and you can still see it to a certain degree in the Bentayga. There's a hint of the theme here in the centre console, but the dash itself is flatter and generic is the wrong word, but certainly more standard. That aside, there's a lot to like in here. The interior is responsible for a lot of that $140,000 option spend, whether it's the carbon trim or the glass roof, the Bang & Olufsen stereo, wireless charging, contrast stitching, or the fancy rotating display that can show digital, analog, or nothing at all. The material quality is also something pretty special. There's next to no plastic in here. I mean, there's this bit of piano black here, but, Everything else is covered in carpet and leather and Alcantara and carbon and real metal. This is all a bit of a button fest and it takes some getting used to, but I certainly prefer that over burying everything in a touchscreen, especially when all the dials click and move so beautifully. The infotainment is essentially a reskin version of Audi's MMI. And while it's not super cutting edge, the touchscreen unit works well enough and has smartphone mirroring, digital radio and app connectivity to keep the car feeling up to date. Most active safety tech is standard, but the Touring specification is an option, which includes adaptive cruise control, high-speed AEB, lane and traffic assist, a head-up display, and night vision. Very James Bond. 
Hopefully, a bird's eye view camera is standard as you really don't want to risk curbing one of those 22 inch rims. It's a little squishy here in the back for adults, but kids should be fine, and both seats are Isofix equipped. The material quality carries over from the front, and there are a pair of USB ports, window controls, and a large central storage area with a lockable compartment. Given the size of the car, the boot isn't massive. Rear seat space has taken precedence, but there are four tie down points and a 12 volt outlet. Now for the main event. How all this spec talk translates to the driving experience provided by this giant slab of British pride. It's really nice in here. Now, that might sound obvious, but purchase price and excellence don't always go hand in hand. It's very quiet, double glazed windows, very comfortable, very soothing. Bentley also seems to have sorted out the low speed behavior of the dual clutch gearbox. I drove a Continental GT a few years ago and it could stumble a bit from standstill. That's not particularly unusual with this type of gearbox and it wasn't terrible, but nor was it befitting of a car like this. Steering is quite weighty, but manoeuvring the big Bentley is made a lot easier by that rear wheel steering, which really sharpens up the turning circle. Visibility can be a bit of a challenge, partly because of the coupe body, but also these A-pillars are pretty massive. To really assess the speed though, you have to lift the pace a bit. The 6 litre twin turbo W12 is a bit of an unusual engine. It sounds and feels a lot like a BMW straight six, only turned up to about 13 because when you hit the throttle in this thing, it absolutely hammers. There's a unique feeling you get from something very heavy and very powerful. I mean, you could cut this current engine in half and have about 240 kilowatts and 1100 kilos, but it would be a very different sort of performance. The ultimate expression of this is when a plane takes off, that sensation of something enormous accelerating harder than it really should. With so much power and torque, the acceleration is absolutely relentless. Obviously, you only get a hint as to its ultimate potential on Australian roads, but it's nonetheless very impressive. It is a shame that the gearbox auto upshifts for you though, even in manual mode. Initially, I drove the speed in the wet, and I only took a couple of corners to discover that it's a very different beast to a regular GT. With the drive mode set to sport, it feels very rear wheel drive. It reminds me a bit of the early Nissan GTRs, which were effectively rear drive until they thought you were gonna have a crash, and then they'd send some power to the front. Thanks for a bit of a handful in slippery conditions, especially as the active eddy roll bars can make it tricky to feel where the limit is. In the dry, it's a different story. Tons of grip, tons of traction, tons of, well, speed. For such a big car, it is incredibly athletic like finding out a rugby player can do a backflip. The rear wheel steering helps point you into a corner and the electronically controlled diff shuffles the power where it needs to go to shoot you out of the corner. Bentley actually claims the speed will power slide all day on a racetrack, but while we don't have the venue or the tyres to test that, the ASP dynamic mode does allow you to explore the car's handling while retaining a safety net. One caveat to that is that the GT speed doesn't feel 2.3 tonnes until you push it a little bit hard, at which point it suddenly really does. So, job done. Bentley wanted to make a more dynamic Continental GT and it has succeeded admirably. Thoughts from here on are a little more philosophical. It all goes back to that question I posed at the start. Is there any point making a Continental GT sharper to drive? I keep vacillating over this. On the one hand, is anyone actually going to drive their Bentley hard enough to notice the changes, so just buy the regular car? But then, the speed isn't any less comfortable than the regular car, but it's better to drive, so buy this one. Then again, if you want a sporting GT, the likes of the Ferrari Roma or Porsche 911 Turbo S are better to drive again, but then the Bentley actually has proper back seats, so I don't know. The waters are muddied further by the V8 Continental GT, which sounds and feels sportier again, and is still pretty sharp to drive. Thankfully, I don't have to make that decision. 
All I've got to do is tell you that the Bentley Continental GT Speed is one very flash and very fast motor car, and one that's very aptly named. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe to the Car Sales channel for more, and leave us a comment down below with any cars you want to see us review.